The Wagner coup that happened the week of June 23rd, 2023 was pretty darn strange. And as of June 26th, we still don't know the final disposition of the Wagner private military company, the Russian army, or even President Putin. President Putin is still in power for now, but he has been weakened. Now, I don't even pretend to understand American politics, so I really can't provide good commentary on Russian statecraft. However, I do know a little bit about math. And I wonder if there is a way of mathematically figuring out where President Putin might flee to if he had to do so. So I crunched the numbers and I developed the Macbeth Asylum rubric, which can mathematically predict where a dictator might go if they have to flee their country. You can download the rubric from my Substack, which also contains a longer article on the history of successful and failed asylum attempts. It's free, although I would appreciate you tossing me five bucks and supporting your channel if you can. You can also buy an awesome t-shirt, order your cigarette from Mucker Branding, get a cameo greeting for the person in your life who loves the channel as well. So now, this rubric can work for any dictator, not just President Putin. And here it is broken down on the scale of one, two, and three, with three being the best chance and one being the worst. The first route is the likelihood that the country of sanctuary can be reached. Remember, you have to get to the country of sanctuary first to have any hope of surviving. The second row describes when the country will offer asylum. This is based on the history of that country offering asylum, extradition treaties, and whether they are a member of the International Criminal Court. Then there are the chances that the country will protect the asylum seeker. Some countries may be easy to reach, but if the political situation changes, the former dictator may be in danger. Finally, you have to grade on why a nation offers asylum. Some nations offer asylum on humanitarian or religious grounds, such as Saudi Arabia. That's the best case scenario. Other nations offer asylum based on previous colonial ties or as a message to other dictators that if you keep the host nation happy, there will always be a place to run as long as you keep the host nation rich. This isn't as good as humanitarian asylum, but it's better than the alternative. Finally, the worst offering is one that is done as a bargaining chip. Think of a country offering asylum and then offering that ousted dictator back to the new government of their former country. For a price. So... Let's plug in the possible destinations into the Macbeth Asylum rubric and see what comes out the other end to determine where President Putin may flee to if he has to leave Russia. To start, there's Belarus. Belarus has a history of providing asylum for political leaders, like when they hosted former Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych. Belarusians are not Russian, but their two countries share economic, cultural, and linguistic ties. Belarus would be the easiest country to access, but Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko maybe in ill health, and the political situation for President Putin may become tenuous if Lukashenko loses power. So, Belarus is probably the easiest country to reach, and it will probably offer asylum, and it will likely protect President Putin. They are a favorable host nation, so they get a total score of 11. I think that this is the best place for President Putin for a short-term escape. Next is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has been known to provide refuge to several deposed leaders, including former Ugandan dictator Idi Amin. Islam also has a long tradition of guest right, leading all the way back to Hadith 15, which reads, Let him who believes in Allah and the last day be generous to his neighbor. Let him who believes in Allah and the last day be generous to his guest. Saudi Arabia is also a monarchy, and there is no outside threat to King Salman's leadership. However, Travel to Saudi Arabia may be complicated with a need to fly over Turkey or Iran. I can see Saudi Arabia as an option if power is relinquished by ultimatum, or if President Putin flees to Belarus first and then goes to Saudi Arabia in a negotiated settlement. Now let's look at Venezuela. Russia has intimate ties with Venezuela, and they provide humanitarian aid and assistance to Venezuela during times of economic and social crises. However, Venezuela is extremely difficult to reach, and they're also a member of the International Criminal Court. So the arrest warrant that's been issued by the ICC may be honored by Venezuela. So Venezuela has a low probability of reach, a moderate probability of sanctuary, and a low probability of protection. And I can see Venezuela selling President Putin back to Russia's new government for more favorable economic terms. So I don't think Venezuela is a possible escape. And there's Syria. Russia has provided significant military assistance to Syria, including arms, equipment, training, They've maintained a military presence there and a common fight against ISIS. However, there is extreme political instability in Syria, and it's difficult to access without going through Europe or Turkey. Also note that it may be unwise to remain in a country that has a significant Russian military presence 
who may be loyal to a new leader. That's how you fall out of a window. Finally, there's the People's Republic of China. I don't really see that as an option. China is always going to do what's best for China. So while China is super easy to reach, I don't see China offering protection or asylum, especially if they think they can gain favor with the West by turning him into the ICC. So I think it is most likely for President Putin to flee Belarus if there's a coup, or Saudi Arabia if he steps down. But ultimately, I think his final destination will be Saudi Arabia. If we take a look at Intelligence Community Directive 203 standards, I believe that Saudi Arabia is the final destination of President Putin and falls into the likely category. For a more detailed analysis, complete with other countries like Serbia, Zimbabwe, and Cuba, go to my Substack, which you can get in the pinned comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, hi, America. It's me, Elon. Uh, if you want to be cool like me, go and get a Ryan McBeth t-shirt or hoodie from Bunker Branding. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a high mouse shirt because it fires rockets, and rockets are pretty cool, just like me. Ha 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 ha, you fool. It is me, Mark Zuckerberg, from Facebook, and I will be the coolest once I get a Patriot shirt because the system is fully automated, just like me. <laughs> I'm going to get a U.S. Navy Department of the Boat People hoodie because I love their management style. Now, I will be cooler than any of you lads once I get my drone sweet drone shot. Now, I'm going to get a landmine marker shirt because they blow up just like windows. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to get. Oh, no. It is Steve Wozniak from uh, Apple. That's right, you nerds. You think you're the coolest for wearing a shirt? Well, Ryan McBeth is all the work, yeah. So go buy a shirt from Bunk of branding to fund Ryan Beth to increase your understanding. Oh yeah!